Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to another episode of the Catholic League Forum. I'm Mike McDonald, Director for Communications at the Catholic League, and joining me today is Bill Donahue, President and CEO of the Catholic League. Now, Bill, uh, we had another very strong week this week. Uh, I got a lot of material to go through here. And I want to start with a piece that you uh, wrote on Monday, uh, dealing with the AP, and they're all up in arms about uh, that we still believe in the seal of confessional in this country for the most part. Uh, can you uh, tell us uh, the one simple question you had and the, the lack of answer you got from them? Yeah. Well, Michael Resendez is uh, a guy who co-authored a piece with another fellow whom I don't know of. Uh, but Resendez is a fellow who made his name with the Spotlight uh, series there. They, they went after the Catholic Church in Boston, and, uh, and, and the church needed to be exposed for what they did in Boston. It was a right. disgrace. So I have no problem with that particular, but I do have a problem with the fact that this guy just doesn't give it up. He's, he's on the hunt for the Catholic Church, okay? Now, he's upset that we don't bust the seal of the confessional. That's basically what he's, what he's about. He doesn't put it in those words, but he's wondering how many unknown people have been abused that we don't know about that a priest may have learned about or somebody in some other religion. He's basically going after the priest uh, in the confession. Well, you know, how many people are there exactly? Quite frankly, we don't know of anybody like this. He's upset that uh, a Utah congresswoman, Angela Rivero, and a state senator from California, Jerry Hill, tried to pass legislation that would force uh, the 17 states that don't have mandatory reporting for clergy uh, sex abuse uh, to actually uh, be in line with the other 33. Well, that sounds pretty good. I, he's not worried about psychiatrists and, the, and, and their patients and the lawyer and, 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 and his shield uh, with, with his source, but he's worried about this. Quite frankly, the reason why Romero and Hill didn't win is because the Catholic League played a major role in it. Because we knew what they were on to. I wrote to uh, both of these people, Angela Romero, the congresswoman, and, uh, and, and, and State Senator uh, Jerry Hill, and I said, where is your evidence? Name me one case where we've learned about a priest who should have said something, perhaps, to the authorities, if that's what you're saying, they don't, they don't care about the seal of the confessional. Right. Where are these abuses running around? Where are these cases? There aren't any. Neither one can answer me. So I put the question to Revendez. I said, do you know of any people, any instances, where somebody's getting away with preying on kids and it, this was revealed to a priest in the confessional? Do you know of one case? Do you know of any prosecutors who have gone forward? He never answered. There aren't any. This is a ruse. The real goal is to bust the seal of the confessional. It's not a, a concern about kids. Yes, and a good point uh, to raise on this uh, that you made, in states that do force priests to right. break the seal of the confessional, or any other religion for that matter, uh, they have fewer reports than yeah. the states that respect it. That even surprised me, but there's a, a study by uh, an NYU uh, School of Medicine professor and a professor of uh, law, University of Michigan, wrote in 2014, that everything you just said is absolutely accurate. So this is uh, this is basically uh, uh, a ruse. Yes, absolutely. So now you did something this week, which I'm very proud of. Uh, early in the week, uh, about Senator Elizabeth Warren. I know she's one of your favorites out of Massachusetts. Uh, this guy worked for the Trump administration, so I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's big on Elizabeth Warren. Yes, I am. Uh, what is it that you? What's your beef with Elizabeth Warren? So, well, uh, Bill, first let me just say thank you for the opportunity. I, I really enjoyed writing the piece, and I'm, I'm glad you uh, liked it so much. Uh, but, dear viewer, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren, she's famous, obviously, for trying to pass herself off as a Native American. That's probably the biggest lie she's ever told. But there's another big lie in her uh, record, Bill. Uh, she likes to present herself that she's a champion of women, and she likes to be the, the pro-choice advocate. But if you, you look at her, rec uh, her uh, record across the board, uh, from her rhetoric to her voting record, uh, to her monomaniacal obsession with hunting down uh, crisis pregnancy centers, uh, going after those uh, great institutions, uh, she's completely, entirely sold that uh, it can only be answered by an abortion. Any sort of unplanned pregnancy. No must, choice there. There is absolutely no choice. She is not an advocate for choice. Uh, she took to the warpath immediately after the leak of the Dobbs decision. The warpath? Is that, is that a play off the words <laughs> that she's a Native American? I mean, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Could be. <laughs> Uh, and, right, she just goes after them constantly, uh, after the pro-life centers, saying that 
they they trick women, they trap women. She wants to shut uh, them they down. They do all these things. Right, she, she wants to shut them down. Right. And while she's saying this, it should be noted, and I'm sure you know this as well, dear viewer, that over 70 uh, pro-life centers have been targeted by firebombing, graffiti, broken windows, vandalized offices uh, by radicals. I'm not saying there's a direct correlation between Elizabeth Warren and uh, these vandals. That's, I think, too far of a stretch. But she's definitely setting a tone. And if you look at her voting record, She's never once voted for a pro-life initiative, and she always votes for uh, abortion. Right. So if you take this as a whole bill, uh, she's definitely very much in the uh, the pro-abortion camp, not the, the pro-choice camp. A anti-choice. Yep, she is anti-choice. Uh, and unfortunately, though, this has uh, seemed to become very emblematic of the Democratic Party. You had another uh, look this week at uh, Joe Biden, uh, the very devout Catholic that he is. And uh, he had a White House event dealing with uh, Dobbs, uh, birth control, and the University of Idaho. Can you tell us about that, Bill? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, Idaho has restrictive uh, abortion laws, and so the University of Idaho, being a state school, the general counsel there put out a memo on September 23rd saying that we can't be in the business of promoting abortion. That's basically what it is. Now, Biden turns this into they're not allowed to talk about contraception on the campus. That's simply not true. First of all, if you read the memo, it says almost nothing about contraception. Right. The one uh, example it gives is emergency contraception with an order paper, uh, order, abortifacient. It's an abortion-inducing drug. But most of it's on abortion, yet you can't promote it. No one is saying you're going to get locked up. There's no gag rule, no muzzle uh, going on there. And, and you can go to the dispensary there, uh, the Women's Health Center, and they give you the, the, uh, the birth control anyhow. Uh, I do think that the law that's written in Idaho needs to be refined. And, and you can't get into the question of, well, you're not allowed to talk about this in the classroom. I mean, I spent 20 years in education, 16 as a professor. I don't want to be told by the state what I can talk about legitimately in, in the classroom. So uh, there are some concerns there. You can talk about abortion, but it, ha it has to be kind of narrowly tailored. So I, I understand some of the criticism. What, what Biden did, of course, is then it was engaged in hyperbole. He exaggerated what's going on, and he talked about contraception because he knows that's a much more tender subject with the American people. You mean they're going after the contraception? That's what this is. It's because of the Dobb decision overturning Roe that they're trying to uh, create a sense of hysteria. Yeah. Uh, now, Bill, this weekend we have Columbus Day coming up. Uh, we'll be enjoying a nice long weekend. We take off Columbus Day because of Christopher Columbus. Yes, great, great explorer. Right. Uh, but not everyone is as keen on uh, Christopher Columbus. You had a piece out this week dealing with uh, how the NEA is promoting some anti-Columbus Day narratives and all that. Can you uh, talk us through that a bit? The National Education Association is the largest, not only teachers union in the country, it's the largest labor union wow. in the country. Over three million people belong to it. Wow. So I typed in, in the NEA website, you could do the same, I typed in Christopher Columbus and bingo, I get all this stuff about indigenous people. Well, what do you mean indigenous people? The American Indian people migrated here like the Irish. Yeah. They came from Asia. Of course, the Bering Strait, okay? They may have been here first. I don't know what claim that gives you, but the fact of the matter is there was mistreatment. There's no question about it. It's also true that the Indians mistreated each other. That's why a lot of the Indians took our side in this. The thing that bothers me is this. That is to say they, they joined in with the Europeans against uh, their own people. Look, the NEA is depending on Howard Zinn, the Zinn Education Project, Howard Zinn's work which is a people's history of the, United, of, a, of the United States, the most left-wing guy you could find. He was a member of the Communist Party. He distorted the record of what Columbus said. If you want to read uh, a good book, which takes apart Zen, read the book by Mary Graybar, G-R-A-B-A-R, debunking Zen, debunking Howard Zen. She shows how he left out what Columbus said with these ellipses, intentionally to distort what he had to say. Now, where did Zinn, which I've, I've been reading about Howard Zinn, the, the Communist Party uh, America hater for years, I did not know until I read Mary Graber's book that he got his information on Columbus from some guy by the name of Hans Koenig. I never heard of this guy. He, he wrote a high school book, and it's a very slim volume, and that's what Zinn used as his basis to attack Columbus. Now, as the author of many books, I can tell you, if you want to write a non-fiction book, you better be able to cite your sources. Right. That makes All right? Sense. This guy, Koenig, which Zinn depended on, didn't have one source. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the NEA is promoting an idea about Columbus that is 
promote, it was promoted by a member of the Communist Party who hates America, who relied on a book that has no sources whatsoever, no citations. As I told Christopher Hitchens, my English buddy who died at the age of 62, uh, because he was a reckless guy, unfortunately, uh, that you can't write a book about Mother Teresa in 99 pages and give me no footnotes and no endnotes and no bibliography and expect me to take you seriously. I would give that as an, I would give my undergraduate students an F in that. And I told that to Christopher's face. I wouldn't talk mine his back. God bless the poor guy, wherever he is. But uh, this is what's going on here, and it's a disgrace. Yep. Uh, so, dear viewer, if you're interested in any of these stories that we talked about, uh, check out our website, catholicleague.org. We'll have a link in the description below, but catholicleague.org, you can find more detail on all these stories. Now, Bill, I want to close this out. Uh, we do have a sad story to uh, relate this week. Uh, Bernie McGurk, uh, is a longtime friend of yours, and uh, he, he passed, passed away. away, unfortunately. Can you... Uh, People may know thoughts. Bernie McGurk. He was executive producer of I Miss in the Morning. Bill O'Reilly had him on a number of times. A tall, thin Irish guy, a great man. Uh, I was on with him many, many times with Sid Rosenberg. Bernie and Sid in the Morning is the number one rated uh, uh, show on, on, on radio in the New York area. Uh, he died at the age of 64 uh, just the other day. Uh, I think it was October the 5th. Uh, prostate cancer, and he had other complications, uh, only at the age of 64. He was one of the most fun-loving guys I ever met in my life, and when I, when I, when I handed up with him and Sid, was another great guy, Sid Rosenberg, uh, these guys are courageous, they're fun, they're great to be with. It's a sad thing that we lost uh, Bernie. Uh, he will be badly missed. He's, he's known in the New York uh, community, he lived in Long Beach and Long Island, big Irish guy. Uh, it's a big loss to us. He was an iconic guy, a legend, not only in New York, but I think in the broadcast industry in general. Yes, absolutely. So our thoughts and prayers are obviously with uh, his family and friends and this very sad time. Uh, so, Bill, I think this is a good point to wrap it up. Uh, dear viewer, uh, again, if you're interested in anything we talked about, catholicleague.org. We'll have a link in the description below. And as always, if you could give this a like and uh, the, click the subscribe button, that would greatly help us out a lot. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.